So anyway, I'm gonna kind of take you through and I'm gonna move through as quick as I can because I know we're short on time, but I'm gonna kind of go through and uh, what most people like to know uh, is the story of Costco. So I'm gonna kind of go through it real quick for you. So Costco actually started, uh, I'm sure a lot of you know Jim Senegal and uh, Jeff Robin and uh, originally drew plans to start a new business and it was designed to clone really which was a uh, the Price Club which was a warehouse club in uh, down in uh, San Diego and uh, from that uh, we raised about seven and a half uh, million dollars we can't even get a piece of property these days for seven and a half million dollars so that's what it took to uh, start the company at that time there were uh, six additional warehouse clubs uh, out there uh, Saul Price uh, always used to make the remark, and don't take this wrong, but he wished he would have put a condom on the business. But with that, there were six other uh, companies that grew, Sam's, BJ's, Pays, Wholesale Club, Warehouse, and Price Savers. Now there's only uh, two of them left, which is a Price Club and uh, Sam's. Right out front here, this is our uh, first uh, Costco warehouse. Uh, you can see that uh, the little square in the front was our office, and that's where everything started. 30 years later, uh, we've turned that into, or actually about 25 years later, we bulldozed that old uh, Costco down and created this, uh, this new one down there. The original business plan uh, was to basically, we figured that in 1989 we'd have about uh, 12 buildings, and when I talked, or 1984, when I talked to Jim, Jim said, look, come up here, we're gonna start a business and uh, we're gonna have about 20 Costco's. You know, you can stay up here in Seattle, you'll run one of the Costco buildings. And I said, you know, what have I, what have I got to lose? I didn't quite see myself running a Costco for 30 or 40 years. But uh, we came up here and business got started. And uh, when we thought we would have, uh, like I said, we figured we'd have average sales of about $80 million. And total sales, if we could do a billion dollars, we'd be happy and make a 3% bottom line. First year of operation, uh, we opened up, we had sales of $100 million, and uh, we opened up four uh, locations, Salt Lake City, Tacoma, South Center. And what was crazy, we also decided to go to Tampa, Florida. Now, this is a startup company, and uh, we're going to head to Tampa. <laughs> so in 1985, we entered the Canadian market for us. 1986, we decided to go to the Midwest. 1987, we leave the Midwest. So you've got a company, you've got a company that started in Seattle, you've got a company that decided, we'll, we'll show them, we're gonna go to Tampa, and then we're gonna go right smack in the Midwest. So we've, we can go left to right. What we thought of, forgot was, we might run out of money. So we had to close down in uh, 1987 because we were struggling in Florida, and uh, we were concerned in 1987 if we were gonna have enough money to make it. 1988, uh, one of the big breakthroughs, we went into the meat department business. 1992, we ventured out down to uh, Mexico. So we learned our lesson in the uh, United States, but we saw opportunities in, in other countries. In uh, 1993, we headed to Europe. In 1993, we merged with uh, Clone. At that time, uh, the combination of both, uh, both companies was about $13, $13 billion. And in 1995, uh, we went to Taiwan, and I hope you're a member in Taiwan. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> 1996, some people suggest we went to another country. We went to New York. In 1997, this was probably one of the uh, bigger, uh, real big growth in our company. We went to the uh, Costco executive member. And uh, what this was designed to do, we created member services. And for uh, extra $100 a year, you could get discount on these services anywhere from car insurance to uh, mortgage lending, et cetera. And literally, we could not give this sell this card or give it away. And obviously what we do with our membership fees, we collect membership fees. The greater our membership fees are, the more we turn around at lower prices. And we couldn't give this away, so uh, Jim Senegal's sitting around and he says, look, we're gonna give everybody that buys one of these, we're gonna give them a 2%, you know, 2% rebate every year. 
And all of us on the executive committee thought he had lost his mind. You know, we're having a tough time paying bills now and we're going to give him 2% back. And it was probably one of the biggest things that just really got our business even moving faster was giving everybody who bought this card a 2% rebate. 1989, uh, we got into the uh, dot-com business. And uh, yes, Amazon is still around. 1999, we uh, went into Japan. In the year 2000, we uh, decided that we were going to get into the travel agent business and uh, to give one more thing to enhance our membership. So we bought a travel company called Pacific Travel, and this has uh, become a very, a very big business for us. We never took credit cards, but in uh, 2004, we uh, decided to get into a relationship with uh, American Express where we would allow them on any purchases uh, that was made on that car that was co-branded with, uh, with us. So your membership fee actually gave you a free American Express card if you qualified. And along with that, you would get up to a 2% rebate on all your purchases. This has also become a very big credit card for us. And also, we are American Express's largest card holder now. And in 2006, something that uh, we went out and did that has not become that rewarding for us, we got into the car wash business. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've got about seven of these, and uh, until we figure out what we're doing here, we will have seven. So it's, uh, <laughs> we're, uh, this is not one of our greater success stories, but uh, we're going to figure it out over time. Our strengths. Clearly, our card holders uh, are 90% strong membership renewal. If we ever see that renewal rate drop, we know we're going to have a problem. So it's very important that we continue to uh, maintain that. Treasure hunt atmosphere, it's important for us that you came in and said, I look for four things, and I spent $300. <laughs> that's, when you quit doing that, that's going to be another red flag. You know, merchandise strategy, limited SKUs, uh, limited selection, high quality national brands. You know, one of the things for efficiencies, we put things on pallets, try not to handle the merchandise. That's one of the ways that we keep our expenses down. Television sets, a uh, big category for us, over $2 billion uh, last year. Uh, one of the things that you'll be seeing in TVs is, will be the new 4K TV, which will be coming out. Uh, it's out now, but you'll see the prices come down. For you guys and gals out there who love football, you'll actually see the grass move on these uh, TVs. They're unbelievable. Diamonds, 114,000 carats in diamonds last year. National brands, we have our Kirkland Signature. We continue to sell brand merchandise. Lucky Jeans here, $34.99. Our Kirkland Signature shirt was, has become a very popular shirt for us at $17.99. Our wines were the uh, largest fine wine seller in the United States. Produce, we're currently sourcing now for 44 countries. Uh, meat produce is a very important for us in terms of driving trips into Costco's. Our bakeries, uh, bakery sales over $1.4 billion last year. This is, I know for a lot of you guys, this probably isn't really exciting. For someone like myself, uh, three days prior to Thanksgiving, 17 million dinner rolls, 1.6 million pumpkin pies. <laughs> so little things in life. <laughs> Our meat sales, over $5.4 billion in sales. This is probably one of my more favorite, or one of my most favorite items, our rotisserie chickens. Three, uh, 499 chicken, 69 million chickens last year. One of the next things that we, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're not, we are a brand house. One of the brands that we created was our uh, Kirkland Signature brand. Uh, this is our number one selling liquor item. This is the number one selling ice item also in Palm Springs. That's a true story, by the way. Number one, number one selling item in both of those buildings. Why did we succeed? We weren't smart enough to have an exit strategy. We just figured that if we bring merchandise with low prices, we're going to figure out how to, how to make this thing work. And uh, you know, it, we've been very blessed. 
understand disciplines required. We assembled a good team, great merchants. You know, we, we think it's a, a fun place to work. We hope our employees do. We uh, turn our management less than 1% a year. So uh, we think it's uh, people enjoy working there. And we were, we've been very blessed. Uh, anybody else that tells you that it's all about you, it's, it's not accurate. We're very fortunate, very blessed.